In this video, I'm going to show you how I process an HDR photo using Lightroom and Aurora HDR with the intention of making the photo look as realistic as possible. So I have these three images photographed at the Oregon coast, and I believe the brackets were approximately one and a half stops uh, apart from each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and open these into Aurora. Now, when you open from Lightroom using the plugin, you have a few different options and a few different ways that you can get to the Aurora application. You can use the plugin extras command and just go down to transfer to Aurora. Now, this will pull the original raw photos in. Uh, so if you don't need to make any changes to your images beforehand inside of Lightroom, then you can go ahead and use this option. The other command is the export with preset command. Open original images does the same thing as that plugin extras command. But if you need to make any adjustments to your images before you merge them together, and probably the most common is going to be editing the white balance and balancing that out so it looks good in the photo, then you'll want to use the TIFF option. This will take in the edited Lightroom photos. So if you've made any adjustments to your images inside of Lightroom, such as the white balance, then you'll want to use this TIFF option, which will take all of those edits into consideration and merge the files with those edits in place. In this example, I did not and I do not need to make any adjustments to the original photos, so I'll just go ahead and select Open Original Images. So Aurora has opened up and it's giving me this window and it's telling me that these are the files that it's going to create my HDR from. Now at the very bottom left of this window, I have a few different options. Alignment is one you'll want to use if you created a handheld HDR. I use a tripod for this, so that's not necessary in this case, but I do want to select the additional settings option. I'm gonna select the ghost reduction. Um, I have some moving water in here, and I'm just kind of curious to see what will happen if I actually use the ghost reduction. Um, so I'll just go ahead and select this, and I'll just go with the highest amount. Um, it may or may not affect anything. It's a little different because I am working with uh, image with moving water, water and it's not like there are people or things that actually need to be removed from it. Um, but I'll go ahead and play with that and see what happens. I'm also going to tick that chromatic aberration removal box because there is a possibility of having some chromatic aberration there um, on the some of the sides of those rocks because of the contrast difference. So that's ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and click create HDR and I'll give that a few moments to process. Okay, the merging process is complete. I'm gonna go ahead and make my window full screen here. And before I get to any of the processing, I'm gonna just kind of give you a few workspace tips that I like to use. First of all, if you don't wanna see those presets at the bottom, or if you just wanna to toggle back and forth to access them, press that tab key and it will hide them. And if you want to access them again, just press that tab key. And over on the right, especially if this is maybe your first time using the software, you're gonna have all of these options and it can be a little bit overwhelming uh, to see everything all at once. So what I like to do is I like to set it into solo mode or that's what it's called in Lightroom and I'll show you how it works. If you hold the option key and then click on one of those arrows, all of those panels will collapse and so now as you open a panel, it's only going to show you that panel that you have selected. So it just kind of simplifies that workspace and makes it a little bit less cluttered. And at the top, there are some buttons that you can access as well. If you don't need to see, let's say, your histogram, you can hide it and toggle that back and forth. Same with the layers. If you don't use layers, if you don't want to use layers, you can toggle that on and off. And then, of course, that far left little icon is for the presets, which I showed you the keyboard shortcut for. Okay, let's go ahead and get to processing this image. I'm gonna start out with this base layer. And what I like to do is I like to kind of separate out my different edits on different layers. That makes it easier for me to kind of localize the adjustments that I want to make. And so what I like to do with this first layer is pretty much just edit the tone mapping along with some of the exposure and contrast controls as well. Now, because this is a landscape, uh, I like to set my HDR look down as low as it can go. Um, let me show you what it looks like if I were to move it up to the right. So I'll push it pretty far to the right. And we're getting that really kind of crunchy HDR look, which does not work well, uh, especially for landscape photos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll the HDR look 
all the way to the left. Now I don't lose that tone mapping, I just don't have that same type of crunchiness that I would have if I were maybe processing um, an architecture type photo where I have a little bit more clean lines and places that don't need to be as soft. But in this case, I want to really make sure that it, it looks natural and setting that HDR look all the way to the left helps me accomplish that. Next, I'm going to make a few adjustments to some of the exposure, um, but I'm going to skip the exposure and the contrast settings to start, and I'm going to address this smart tone. So I'd like to add a little bit of brightness to the image. So I'm going to move the smart tone, just kind of slowly slide it to the right, not too far. It looks like I have it set to about plus 17 and that is looking good. If at any time you want to preview a setting, a specific setting, just hover over that little orange dot and click on it to toggle it on and off and it'll show you kind of your before and after from your beginning merge to what you have now. Okay, so I'm gonna continue going down this and um, I don't want my image to be too flat. I wanna make sure I have some pretty good contrast to it. So I'm gonna increase the highlights and not too much. And I'm also going to reduce my blacks, which will kind of intensify those shadow areas. Now I'm gonna do a full preview by pressing and holding the backslash key. So I'm done editing my basic tone mapping, and now I'm gonna move on to the next step, which is to add a new layer. So up at the top, I'm gonna to click on that plus icon, and I'm gonna select adjustment layer. What I'd like to do with this layer is only edit the tone and the color to the rocks. And I'm going to do that by creating a luminosity mask. There are a few different ways that you can create your luminosity mask in Aurora. If you hover over the histogram at the top, you can start to create, and just by clicking, you can actually see those zones starting to be created. But the other option, the option that I prefer, is to access it using the masking tools. So I'm gonna click on that brush icon at the top, and then click on luminosity masking. And now I have a really simple view of my luminosity mask. So I'm gonna start on the left and just click those numbers until I get to where I think it might be a good stopping point. So I'm gonna go from zero to three for my luminosity mask settings. And this eyeball lets me toggle that area. So anything that's kind of green is the area that's going to be masked. And I'll go ahead and click that green check at the right, and it will create that luminosity mask. Now, if I look over in the layers panel, I can see that the adjustment layer has a mask, and the only areas that are selected in this mask are the darker areas in those rocks. So from here, I'm going to add a preset. I'm gonna press the tab key to access those presets at the bottom, and I'm going to go back to the realistic HDR presets, and select realistic and balanced. So that adds a nice color boost and a little bit of structure to the rock areas. So now if I look over in the panels on the right, anything that is orange means that it has edits made to it. So let's say I don't want uh, something to be affected. Let's say I don't want the vignette to have any edits to it. So I could click on it and I could reset it or I could just make changes to it from here or you can just click on this little, kind of looks like a little recycle button, it's just a reset button and that removes all of the edits from that specific panel. I'm gonna toggle my before and after to see how things are looking and I can also toggle this layer on and off if I just wanna see the edits specific to that layer. And I think that is looking really great. Um, so I'm just gonna continue on from here. And now what I want to do is create a new layer and create another luminosity mask, but this time I only want to edit the sky and the water. So I'll click on that plus icon and select adjustment layer. Then I'll go back over to the luminosity masking button. And this time I'm gonna start by selecting the numbers from the far right, which will select the highlights of my image. So I'll start with 10, and I'll keep going down until the entire sky and the majority of the whites in the water are selected. I'll go ahead and click that checkbox on the right. My luminosity mask is now created and I can see that over in the layers panel. I'm gonna add another preset to this, but this time I'd like to go down to the landscape presets. So I'll click on that little icon in the bottom right and select landscape. And in this case, I'm going to choose landscape high key. 
So that adds a nice amount of brightness to the sky and the water, which kind of helps intensify the contrast of my overall image without making it overly contrasty. Again, over on the right, I can see which settings have been edited. If they are orange, that means they have edits applied, and if they're white, that means they're still set as is. I'm gonna go ahead and press the tab key to hide those presets. And another thing I'm gonna do, which I like to do, especially with my HDR images, is I like to zoom out maybe once or twice to give me a little bit of a different perspective on my photo. Sometimes when an image is full screen, it's easy to over-process because you kind of have tunnel vision on that photo. So I like to back it out a little bit and see it as a smaller size. So over on the right, I'm gonna reset that vignette panel. It might not even show anything, but I just don't really want a vignette added uh, to a layer. And then I'm gonna go into that polarizing filter and I'm gonna move that polarizing filter to the right, which should add a little bit of contrast to the sky and maybe even the water. I'm gonna to toggle that on and off. Yeah, and that did a nice job of kind of bringing out some of the darker areas in the sky. So this is looking really good. I'm gonna do a before and after toggle. I'm gonna to make one more adjustment to this before I finish. So I'm going to go back up to the layers and add a new adjustment layer. But instead of actually making any adjustments, I'm just gonna change the blending mode. I'm gonna change it down to soft light. Out of curiosity though, I am gonna go down to that glow panel. I'm gonna see if increasing the glow does anything. Let me kind of toggle that on and off. Yeah, I actually really kind of like that. Um, overall, this, this adjustment is too powerful. So I'm gonna reduce the opacity of this layer. I'm gonna bring it down to about 30%. Now let's see if I toggle this, just this one layer on and off. And that did some really nice things. So let me go ahead and zoom into the image so we can see it up close. And I think this edit looks really good. So I'm finished and I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. So my image is now processed and it was imported back into Lightroom alongside my other files. So I can preview this maybe by toggling back and forth to one of the original images. And what I like to do a lot of times when I'm working from Lightroom and into other plugins is when it goes back into Lightroom, I like to add a few more adjustments. So I'm gonna press D to go into the develop module and I could either make some edits on the right using the panels. In this case, I think I'm just gonna use some of my own presets to give this image a nice finished look. And so that's how I use both Lightroom and Aurora HDR to create a realistic looking HDR photograph.